All right, so we're still on the prereq seven examples on simplifying rational expressions, and when we left off, I said we're going to have to factor this over here to find common denominators. So let's try to factor this. So what multiplies to give you negative fifteen? That adds to give you two, five, and negative three, because five times negative three is negative fifteen, and five plus negative three is two. So now that I have that factored. Now I can see what I want to put on the bottom to make a common denominator. Well, both have x minus 3, but this one has an x plus 5 and this one doesn't. Now, there's two ways to do this. Way number one, I can put the x plus 5 over here on both sides, or you could realize that there's an x plus 5 on both the top and the bottom and just get them to cross right off, which is what I'm going to do, leaving you with a 1 over x minus 3 plus a 2 over x minus 3. Well, if I have 1 over that and 2 over that, I actually have 3 over that, which is much simpler to solve. If you didn't see that from the start, you could have multiplied by an x plus 5 on both the top and the bottom and realized that things will eventually cancel out after you factor. Okay, so factor this one. Um, to factor this one, I'm going to use slide and divide to factor this one right here. So that means I'm going to slide the 2 over. So that gives me x squared plus 10x minus 10, or sorry, x squared plus 9x minus 10. What two numbers multiply to give you negative 10 that add to give you 9? 10 and negative 1 do, right? Because 10 times negative 1 is negative 10, and 10 plus negative 1 is 9. So I have x plus 10 and x minus 10, but because I slide by 2, I need to divide by 2. So I divide both sides by 2 and I need to simplify it. 10 divided by 2 is 5, and this is x minus 1 half. Now remember, this isn't a factor, this is a fraction. So I need to move that 2 over, so I actually end up with x plus 5 and 2x minus 1. On the bottom, I'm going to slide that 3 over, so that gives me a 30. So what two numbers multiply to give me 30 that also add to give me 17? Well, 15 and 2, because 15 times 2 is 30. And 15 plus 2 is 17. But because I slide by 3, I need to divide each of those by 3. Well, 15 divided by 3 is 5, and that's 2 thirds. But I can't have a fraction. Remember, not in a factor, I can't have a fraction. So I'm going to move that 3 over to the side here. And those are each of the top and the bottom factored. Now, do you see anything there that crosses out? Yeah, the x plus 5's cross out. So all I'm left with is 2x minus 1 over 3x plus 2. Taking a look at this problem now, once again, I need to find common denominators if I'm going to do this. So this is an x plus 1. This is an x minus 1. Very close, but not the same. So I am going to simply put find common denominators. x plus 1 on the bottom here. So it needs to be on the top here. And since this is an x plus 1, now this one does. But this side doesn't have an x minus 1, so I'm going to multiply this by x minus 1 on both sides. So I end up with x minus 1 times 2x minus 1. Over here I get 2x minus 1 times x plus 1. And I have the bottoms there that are the same. So I'm going to have to combine them, which I did right there. And let's FOIL. So x times 2x is 2x squared. x times negative x is negative x. Negative 1 times 2x is negative 2x. And negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. All right, when I combine the like terms there, I get 2x squared minus 3x plus 1. But over here, I need to FOIL. So that's 2x times x, which is 2x squared. 2x times 1, which is 2 negative x, or sorry, negative 1 times x, which is negative x, negative 1 times 1, which is negative 1, and when I combine like terms, I get 2x squared plus x minus 1, but I need to subtract all of that that I foiled. And all of that, after I distribute that negative through to everything, I end up with 2x squared minus 3x plus 1, but this negative becomes a negative 2x squared, that's a negative x, and that is a negative 1. So now, you've got to figure out what crosses out. That's a 2x squared and a negative 2x squared. That's gone. That's a 1 and a negative 1, so that's gone. 
I have a negative 3x and a negative x, so really all I have left on top is a negative 4x, and on the bottom I still have the x minus 1 and the x plus 1. All right, so when handling a problem like this, all you need to do is worry just about the top and the bottom. But the bottom is the crazier one right now, so I'm going to try to combine like terms and denominator first. So currently, I'm going to make the denominator of the 1 be 1, because 1 uh, can be written as 1 divided by 1. So to make the denominators the same, I'm going to multiply this side by the 1 plus x. So when I do that, I end up with 1 plus x, and I still have a minus 1, and a 1 plus x on the bottom over here. So when I combine these uh, the tops together with the bottoms, I end up with 1 plus x minus 1 over 1 plus x. 1 minus 1, all I have left after those cross out is just the x on top. So really what I'm saying is I have 1 over x plus 1, and that is now my bottom. Well, when I have a fraction, you multiply by the reciprocal. So really, I have 1 over x times 1 over 1 plus x times 1 plus x over x. And these cross out, leaving me with just 1 over x as my answer. So a crazy way of simply saying 1 over x. Remember, you can't have roots on the bottom. So if you can't have a root on the bottom, we've got to get rid of that, which means we need two multiply by the conjugate. So since it's 5 plus root x, it's going to be 5 minus root x on both the top and the bottom. So on the bottom, 5 times 5 is 25. 5 times a negative root x is a negative 5 root x. 5 times positive root x is positive 5 root x. And root x times negative root x, the roots cancel out, leaving with just a, should be a negative x. So we end up with the negative x there. Okay, but these cancel out. So because those cancel out, um, all I have left is the 25 minus x in the bottom, but now we need to distribute that top. So 2 times 5, that's 10. 2 times a negative root x is a negative 2 root x. So on the top I have 10 minus 2 root x, and there is your answer. So if you have any other questions or concerns um, with simplifying rational expressions, please let me know. You can try emailing me or go to the Moodle site if need be. Um, otherwise, uh, thanks for paying attention, and I will talk with you later.